Yo, it's Guido coming back at you with a Tactics Talk, and this time it's Battlesnake in his Tier 7 P.43TER. P.43TER, Tier 7 medium tank, here on Fajords. We're on Fajords, and he is headed up to the northeast, heading on up to the northeast, and has a little bit of a train coming with him. This is one of the replays that was sent for the Tier 7 contest that we had. Also showing the extra hit points as he is top tier in a tier 7, 5, and 6 battle. So there's a lot of extra hit points. What you're going to find here is very interesting. is It does take him a while to chew through these lower tier, tier 5 guys down here. This, this is just an absolute smorgasbord right here. Battlesnake. These guys have served you up a delicious dinner of tier 5s. <laughs> this, this is so tasty. We got Cranky Monkey. We have... Uh, Eraser Fissilis, what is this guy's name? Cranky Monkey, uh, Crash and Chris. Oh, it's not Eraser. Crash and Chris and Peanut Butter. Look at this. You got peanut butter spread all over this delicious smorgasbord of tier fives. And then we have this guy. He just slips out of his <laughs> slips out of his soap rock and gets hammered. And now we are just hold down. The reload on this tank is not great. But it hits hard. Look at that. Two, he just dropped 265 from a medium tank on that guy. These guys have zero chance that 267 knows it. He just bites the dust. This guy tries to get away. Interesting thing about losing hit points down to a one-shot with most tanks. Sometimes it's almost as good as killing them as far as getting them out of your way for a moment. Because people are unwilling to take that last shot that takes them out. Much less willing to take that shot than they are to take a shot they know won't take them out. So that guy's going to become much more careful. There are a lot of little pew pew tanks down here, but I think Battlesnake, you could have been much more aggressive on these guys. Nice shot right there, 245 into his face. And watch him. He's not interested anymore. He doesn't want none. The guy tries to run. We take a little shot. A little bit behind him right there, but he dies anyway. So, yeah, get aggressive. Get in there and get these guys out. That's what I would have done probably earlier on this. Just keep pushing them and taking them down. We're going to talk a little bit about the micro positioning within this spot because right now you're doing a pretty good job. But here's my issue with it is how far you're coming out and exposing yourself to TDs down there. Let's see how far you actually go on this one. Not too badly. But the problem is there are TD lines and you're just about coming around the corner. See this little nook? I'd have driven around here, got into this nook, and just started punishing these dudes. Absolutely punishing them. And that way you'd have a better shot at them because you're really kind of pixel sniping the top of their turrets. And I think you could have taken these guys out much faster had you come around the corner. Most of your shots have hit and pinned, but we have a couple bounces and misses and things in here. So I like that you're not just YOLOing in and getting pinned down because the last thing you want to do is get over into this area here, get pinned down by a bunch of pew pews, maybe even have one come push up around you and then start getting shot by guys like the Su-100 down here or the Challenger, although the Challenger's in the middle. So that's another thing you got to look at. If I look at the noses, count the noses, there's not much else left. There's a Su-100, the Chinu's lit. The T20 is unaccounted for. We'll get to him later. So, yes, be careful about it. But if you hug this right side against losers like these two tanks and what was their absolute massacre. The other thing about pushing in and getting them busy is it makes these guys back here a little braver. And they're going to come in and help support you. If you're taking the shots and this thing has a decent turret at this tier... If they have all their attention on you, if they don't have their attention on you, well, that's more hit points that you save because they're not shooting you. They're, they're shooting your friends. So really, it's symbiotic. You both get in there. You all get in there, and you really just start taking these guys down. And this is, here, I would have just charged in at the LC and probably rammed him. A little bit late trying to get that shot off right there. As far as the reload, we weren't going to quite get there. We go raging in. I think this is good. Yeah, just shoot him. That's fine. There we go. And now just go. This is the time to break open this flank over here. And what we're going to do is be a little bit more cautious. We're going to pull back. Su-100s are pretty good. Not bad tanks. There goes the EBR. Good news is he gets lit and you guys can start hammering the poor guy. I think I'd have just gone right around that corner though once I beat the ELC. And then look to go and see. We're just sort of messing around. So I think you're leaving some hit points on the table. We're going to also talk a little bit about ramming right here. How many weapons do you have on your tank? we got a gun and you have the tank. They both can do damage. I might have just rammed this guy. Nice job kind of jinking to make him miss. That's pretty typical of what you see people do. 
Really, his best bet was to push forward or at least go up to the Hotchkiss, but he's turning to take you on. So he gets shot from every direction. Had you rammed him, because it's a much lighter tank, I think you probably would have killed him with some extra hit points. Tallied to you. Down goes the Su-100. So the ram thing's going to come into account here as well. Uh, you know, this there was a delicious smorgasbord that you just had right there, and I was thinking at this part while I was watching the replay, I'm like, ooh, is this an AFK T20 cherry on top? Is it time for dessert? Is the T20 the dessert? Notice he hasn't been spotted. I figured, well, maybe the EBR will let him know, let us know if he is AFK. If he is, then that's free damage, plus a nice free ram as well. And we'll talk about that as we go, because EBR is going to find this guy, and he is, in fact, not AFK. He's been, I guess, sitting at cap, or maybe he was in the bushes and fell back. I don't know. All right. He's got 1,100 hit points. You have 1,100. You've got tanks everywhere coming at this guy. At this point of the game, I prioritize my damage, and I'm going to use my tank. So I'm going to go right at this guy. I'm going to shoot him as I come in. I'm going to ram him. And if I can get enough distance from him as I'm working my reload and we're both swirling and I can ram him again, I will ram him again. Every hit point I can get off this guy. I'm now going to trade my hit points for his. He's not going to win. So get as many of the hit points out of him as you can. That's just extra experience and credits. Really, it's the experience I'm looking for there and the crew experience. You'd have to do the math on whether ramming was worth it or not based on the repairs to your tank. But as far as the experience and the and the uh, the credits go, like I said, the credits may be a wash. You'd have to look at that. But as far as the experience goes, that's more experience and more crew experience for you. So I'm always going to prioritize that. And really, money is not that hard to make in this game. Obviously, if you're a free-to-play player, you would disagree at the higher tiers. That's by design. But as a general rule, it's not hard to get some credits and spending a few extra credits on a repair when you're just getting extra damage out of it. And that's just one of those little things that good players are going to do to add damage to their tallies for that good old DPM. Because DPM doesn't care whether you got it from ramming them or, or shooting them. Obviously, the vast majority of it is from shooting people, but the ram's just a little extra hit points there. And I'm carrying on about it a little bit because it, it actually wraps into a lot of other thought processes and OODA loop kind of things in this game of when I can trade hit points for things. Whether it's position, trading hit points for a position, trading hit points for damage off the enemy, trading hit points for experience and crew experience, and making sure that when I do those and I make those smart decisions, I don't lose games for it, right? So ultimately, for me anyway, prioritizing winning the winning games for the most part, unless I have some weird mission out there. But you can apply that decision-making matrix to a lot of things, not just ramming whether I'm going to poke, whether I'm going to make a move to a new position, whether I'm going to pass somebody, all of those things that I take into account and I tr am willing to trade a few hit points because that is a, the better overall thing to do. All right, so I just wanted to beat that dead horse on the ram thing for a while. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Appreciate the support of the channel as always. Hang in there. If you're looking for other ways to support the channel, you'll find them down in the description. I think it's over there. And we will see ya.